Hey everybody, Nick Arnett, another episode of Cool People I Know Are Meet. I met Michael today, extremely cool, man. You're, you're like the hit. Uh, he's doing some work with some youth today, and he's like the coolest guy here. The kids just totally love him. Because, Michael, what, what do you do, my friend? I direct video game trailers, which is pretty fun. How about that? Like, what, what are some of the video games that you could tell us about? Uh, recently, um, Battlefield Hardline, Titanfall, Battlefield 4, um, Battlefront. Holy smokes. Yeah. A lot of battling, Michael. And there's a lot, there's a, a lot of battling, a lot of fighting. And you seem like kind of a mellow guy. So I, how, do, how does this, uh, is this your alter ego, this, this battling stuff? Uh, you know, it, it can be fun to, to blow some stuff up. It's definitely a nice stress reliever. Um, but yeah, I, I think you kind of have to be even keeled to work in that industry. Now, well, okay, so let's back up. You're, sure. uh, you're here with the Yale Day of Service. You're a Correct. Yale grad. So let's talk about high school. What would you do in high school? Actually, I am not a Yale grad. No? Um, I, I, uh, my girlfriend is. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. By association, By that's association, good. yeah. You're a, well, Honorary where, Yaley. <laughs> well, where, where did you grow up and, and where did you go to college then? I uh, grew up in Northern California in a little town called Pleasanton. And I went to college at UC Davis and then came to Los Angeles to go to grad school at USC. Nice. Okay. Well, USC and Yale, they kind of have a little beef going, don't they? <laughs> right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. USC, what, film school? Film school. Because I didn't just guess that. I heard you tell somebody. So anyway, UC, USC, I did a lot of uh, their student films back in the day, way back in the day. Really? When, yeah, way back in the day. And I hope they're not, I hope they don't show up anywhere either because some cool. of them are pretty embarrassing. Um, so, uh, so you did that and then yeah. you're done with film school. Then what happens? Um, yeah, I went to film school and then I got out and I just started freelancing. And... Um, at first, it was a little tough because freelancing is based on networking and who you know. Yeah. And everyone I knew when I graduated had just graduated as well. But over the last four years, as my friends and colleagues have gotten further into the industry, the networks have paid off, and now I can freelance basically full time. Love it. And you got like an incredible voice. Did you ever do any voiceover work? <laughs> you really do have a great voice. People say I have a face for radio. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I know. I, 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 I was a radio host uh, in college, but that's about it. Wow, but and it's too bad that's kind of gone now. But that wouldn't that be a great gig? It, really it would. It was fun. It was fun. Although podcasting is a big thing now, so who knows? Now, now you like you like music a lot, then, right? So do you, I do. Do you have when you direct these videos? Do you have a say so in the maybe the background music and stuff? Uh, that's not so much my field. There's okay. a uh, the video game trailers that that I help out with are are. It's a big team involved because we're doing them over at Electronic Arts, a lot of them. Electronic Arts, okay. Yeah, over at Marina Del Rey. And there are so many talented people who are, who are part of that process from yeah. the sound mixers to the engineers to the musicians. It's, it's a big, big thing. And your part of it is what? I direct the video game captures. So it'll be me and a group of 10 to 30 gamers in a room. And they'll have a, an alpha or a beta build of the game and we'll recreate kind of exciting scenarios that take place in the game and all oftentimes have an in-game camera and so I'll be filming the game while it's taking place but it's all rehearsed and choreographed sometimes it takes weeks to make a five minute video and so these guys just come the, the gamers you hire yep, the best of the best week, gamers and they're there week after week just mm -hmm. playing yep they're playing well yeah uh, they, they are definitely working okay. um, because they, they, they have to do very specific tasks. So, okay. you know, like, uh, okay, you need to stand right here and then when this guy runs through, make sure that you blow him up right at the spot and then run to the tank and then get in. So it's all very rehearsed. And then when these trailers are released, where, where how are they released and where? Yeah, so um, they'll be released on YouTube, um, uh -huh. on the, the game's website. Um, and through like official channels uh, on on YouTube, basically. And so you know you know games coming out like a year a year before they come out, kind of stuff. <laughs> Some of them, yeah. yeah. And you can't tell us anything, can uh, you? But no. it's just really good stuff. It is cool. It's what what's what's really been instructive um, over the last couple of years that I've been doing it is just seeing how much work and talent is involved, and how sometimes the arc of of these games is five plus years. You've got teams of dozens, if not hundreds, of people all working in tandem over a long period of time to make something that, you know, it might take a gamer a couple dozen hours to play, but it took thousands and thousands of hours to do and produce. Yeah, it is incredible. I mean, the very, the very rudimentary uh, level I've been at, I just can't believe somebody thought of all these scenarios. If you do this, then that happens. Yeah. And they have to think of all of those, right? They really do. It, it's, it's, a, it's very similar to filmmaking or to watching a movie, but in my opinion, it's almost more cinematic at times, right? Because... You can watch a movie and completely, be completely enveloped, but a video game can be oftentimes as cinematic, but you're involved in the story. 
It's like a very interactive choose your own adventure book. What do you, what do you think is the future of video games? Where, where is it going? If I had to put my money on anything, I would probably say Oculus Rift, which is a, a virtual reality technology that is in its infancy right now, but it's going to be released uh, in early 2016. And that kind of sort of immersive technology, I think, is where a lot of it's heading. Nice. Okay. And that's going to take even more advanced uh, players to, uh, not, not only the people that play it, but the, like the Xbox or something, they'll have to have more advanced versions of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, the technology is, is like I said, it's, it's at its beginning stages, mm -hmm. but it's only going to get better. Yeah. Do you see it as being like, maybe you wouldn't even need to have like an Xbox or something, but everything would be in the cloud? Uh, you would just stream the whole thing? I think so. I think so. As... I think the big um, bottleneck for that is is internet speeds, uh -huh. but I think as Google Fiber, for instance, has been rolled out across the country, it's still only at a few cities right now, but as Google Fiber, which has amazing download and transfer speeds, gets rolled out to more and more cities, I think everything living in the cloud is going to be a complete possibility for sure. And then the ISP is allowing that, that much data to stream too, right? They probably... Yeah, well... Google Fiber, for instance, is, is Google's own ISP. Okay. But they're like as soon as they move into a town, or as soon as they even hint they're going to move into a town, other companies like Warner or Comcast all of a sudden double or triple or quadruple their internet speeds. That sort so of happened here, didn't it, in LA? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Well, hey, what could you say to somebody? Uh, good life advice for you because things have worked out pretty well for you. So what what, what what could you sell, tell somebody like? Uh, I I would say. <clears throat> I think the biggest piece of advice that I would have is if you're passionate about something and uh, you want to do something uh, as a career, um, persistence is the most important thing. Uh, talent absolutely is part of it, but I read this statistic that 50% of film students uh, are out of the film industry five years after they graduate. Wow. Right, because it's hard. It, yes, is, it, is. it is hard to, to, to repeatedly put yourself out there and be open to either criticism or failure or rejection, and it wears on you. And um, some of them are really good, but they just still give up. Extremely talented uh, yeah. people that, you know, either they, they decide, you know, I, I want to make money, <laughs> or, or, I, or, you know, it, the rejection might be too much. But persistence is important, and I would say as long as you believe in yourself and you believe in the, the product or the work of art that you're creating... Persistence will get you through, and that would be my my piece of advice for people out there who want to do something similar. How did you learn persistence? I would say my parents were a hum humongous influence. Mm -hmm. um, my mom and dad, uh, you know, especially when I was a child, there were times where I just wanted to throw in the towel or, or give up on something that I was working on. Right, and they were there uh, with encouragement, and and that was that was really influential, along with a set of teachers. That, that counseled me throughout my childhood. That was really important to me. Well, what a blessing that was for you. I yeah, Because not everybody lucky. gets that. No. So I'm glad you did because it works. So friends, remember that. Anybody at any stage of their life, a little encouragement goes a long way. It really does. Absolutely. It, it, it helps make people like Michael who he is today. And yeah. He's a great guy. Thank you. And he's serving people and he's being so great with the kids today, really patient with them all and engaging them all. So... You're a great guy. I'm really glad I got to meet you. Oh, that's very kind of you to say. Great to meet you as well. All right, friends. Nick Arnett, another episode of Cool People I Meet. I met Michael. All the best to you, everybody. Till next time. Mm -hmm.